everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is another that's inspired by our viewers and we're super excited to do it. Lately we've been getting more and more requests through email and comments to show different procedures of doing different things. And so today's video is basically dedicated to Randy and Kristen who both want to know how to accurately gash an end mill. And so today that's what we're doing. So the gash is this area here where material has been removed and it primarily does two things. Creates a tooth face over here and provides clearance uh, for chips to evacuate the cutting area. This end mill is in pretty decent shape generally, but it has been through some sort of incident where it got some pretty decent chips here on these corners. And so it doesn't need to be sharpened on the side, but the end does need to be repaired. So that's what we're going to go through today. Some pretty typical uh, features and angles on the end of an end mill are the, the relief angle of seven and a half degrees this way. There's also a clearance angle of generally three degrees in this direction. And then the actual angle of the um, gash itself isn't so much written in stone. That's kind of more of a by feel kind of thing. So this repair is going to require three different setups. First, we're going to set up the motorized workhead and we're just going to blast material off the end, get rid of all that damage. Then we're going to make a setup to put the gashes in and then we're going to make another setup to put the clearance angles on. So let's get into it. Let's get the motorized workhead up there and start the process of getting it dialed in where we want it. I'm going to have to actually spin this past 90 degrees because I want to start roughing out that three degree angle um, that the teeth are on. So my table is dialed in zero so I can pretty much trust these graduations on the base of the motorized workhead. I've got that set at uh, three degrees and I'll show you why in just a second here. We're going to come into our grinding wheel and we're going to put this three degree angle on this tooth here and we're going to keep that angle uh, and, and blast this back until we get rid of all this damage. This workhead has a brown and sharp taper in the spindle, but I have these adapters that go from brown and sharp to 5C. So we're using a 5C collet that we're going to hold our end mill in. Again, we're doing a taper, so center height is super important. I do have my spindle dialed in exactly at the same center height as my fixture. And if I want a three degree angle as I've set, with my fixture, I have to have the center height or that'll get all buggered up. I'm just putting on any old plain style wheel here and uh, I'm not even gonna dress it. It doesn't need to run through. I'm not going for a good surface finish. We're just carving out damage, roughing it down, and this wheel will work fine as is. So this next bit here is super important and it's, it's kind of hard to see and I'm gonna explain it as, as best I can, but as we're grinding this damage back, we want this edge of the wheel to stop ever so slightly shy of center and for it to be on this side of center over here. And the reason for that is we want the almost imperceptible radius on this corner of the wheel to leave a little point right in the center of the tool. We're going to need that later uh, in order to make this thing center cutting. So I'll try and explain as we go along. And the thing, the beauty of this is, well, it's, everything's going to change as I come in because there's that three degree angle that this thing is sitting on, but it doesn't matter. You can adjust on the fly and you can always get that little point back. So that was tough to see, kind of a little bit tough to explain, but it's all going to just be clear as day as we, you know, go on. So let's just get into it here. So there's all our damage gone from all these corners. They're ready to be renewed and you can see this tiny little point that I've left right in the center. I hope you can see that. We're sort of going to use that as like a, like a gun sight later. I'm going to tear this setup down now and put this fixture away and we're going to get set up for the gashing. My two remaining setups are going to be done with my sensitive workhead so I'm going to get that up there now.
In order for this next bit to work out, I need this uh, fixture running true to the center line of the table. So I'm dialing that in now. I also need this fixture running zero this way uh, because some of the setup, as you, you'll see as we go on, some of the setup relies on us knowing reliably where center height is. And if this is off center uh, or off zero, then as you travel back and forth, you know, center isn't consistent. So we need this running zero. So I'm happy with that, we can move on. The next step for me here is I need to get um, a tooth, the very corner of a tooth, perfectly vertical over this little, little point we've left in the middle. Now, um, I can measure height with this height gauge, and you pretty much need one of these to do this kind of work. But I, there's no way for me to measure like rotational other than by using height. So I'm going to get this tooth face on center and then I'm going to back it up until it's in the vertical position and then we'll be ready to go. I have my height gauge set at exactly center height. The tool is loose but snug in the collet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rotate that up until it just touches. So now I'm going to tighten my collet up the rest of the way and no doubt this tool has moved some. So let's just see where we are at now compared to our zero. That actually didn't move much. We can live with that. This um, cutting edge, this corner now is exactly at center height, but that's not actually what I need to do this work. I need uh, a toothpaste to be perfectly vertical but these are all on index they are all timed exactly so what I can do is just come around to a known position and now this corner is perfectly vertically above this little point so as I start into this I'm gonna work on my depth first I'm gonna stay shy of coming in to where the point is on the corner once I establish a depth, or at least rough out a depth I'm happy with, then I'll start working my way in using this little nub that we've left behind as a sight. I'll also be paying close attention that I'm not putting a flat on uh, the other side of this point because we basically want it left alone as a nice point with the rake angle that is produced by the flute um, to do the cutting. If you look now, we've pretty much split that little point right in half, which means that we are two center. That's super important if you want this thing to drill. Now I have just nicked this corner uh, as a witness, which is fine as we put the relief angles on, that'll go away. And you can see a witness here of the original gash. And the reason you can see that is the original gash had a very slight rake to it whereas this gash is at 90 degrees. So now that we're there, we can go ahead and gash the other two areas out and just be careful not to interfere with that center cutting point. Well, that's that setup done. We are right through the center here. And now I do have these little spaces here where I can run my wheel off into and not hit the tooth that's supposed to be center cutting, which is this guy right here. Now I'm just going to take my sensitive work head and I'm going to move it around a bunch and I'm going to set up for cutting the three degree angle this way and the seven and a half degree angle this way. And now we can put the primary clearance angle on there.
our little witness of a flat on this corner is almost gone. I suspect this pass is going to take it off. I fed the tool in another two foul, and once that, at the exact moment that disappears, what that's telling us is that the, the point on this corner is exactly in line with the face of the gash that we're cutting, and that's exactly what we want to see. All that's left to do now is um, put our 15 degree secondary clearance angle on and then we'll be done and we can take this thing out and have a close look at it. And that's it, we're done. Uh, you can see that this tooth here goes through center, so it's gonna do the drilling. The other two are back away from center, and they need to be because we can only actually get one all the way to center. And uh, we've got this new gash in here. Again, there's a tiny witness of the previous gash, but none of that matters. Got our primary and secondary clearance angles on there, and that is gonna cut just fine. Whether you're drilling or milling, it's freshened back up and ready to go. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, Randy and Kristen, I hope this helped you guys out some. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.